there is perhaps a new Cold War afoot. Um, at least if you pay attention to the rhetoric of Donald Trump's administration in recent weeks and months about um, the new official state enemy of Maduro in Venezuela. Oh, scary. Um, and, uh, of course, you know, the fact that Trump pulled out of the treaty that ended the Cold War, you know, the first one. Yeah, so, yeah, and then the fact that fucking John Bolton, um, screwed up the North Korea peace talks by demanding that they shut down all nuclear energy and power, including the power for their power grid, not only, uh, stop producing nuclear weapons, which there's actually an easy way to check to see if they are producing nuclear weapons, because you'd have to enrich more uranium faster than you would if you're just enriching uranium to power your country. So, because these war hawks, um, who, and these neocons who saw that easy window in Trump to be like, yes, we're back in power, it's our day now again, um, it's all or nothing to them, it's, 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 American exceptionalism. We're the best. And the whole world can bow before us. That's that's the mindset of U.S. foreign policy. Um, and that's been the mindset for, I mean, throughout, throughout all of the most recent presidents, including Barack Obama... And obviously, especially George W. Bush, and obviously Bill Clinton, and obviously, you know, all the way back to Nixon in Vietnam, and Gulf of Tonkin, and all of it. So, so, uh, what is, what is the deal with all this Venezuela talk anyway? Well, I'm here to tell you the real story. Uh, so Venezuela is a more or less socialist country, um, more leftist economically than the U.S. is, I believe, but, like, th people say that's, that's the reason why the conditions there are so bad, but, um, see, when, when you have these economic systems... You can't just, and I know the left does this with capitalism all the time, but you can't just blame the economic system for every single poor decision that the leadership makes. You can't, you can't do that because the real reason why Venezuela is in cr the crisis that it is, I'm not saying things are good there when I do the inverted commas, I'm just saying this is what the official narrative is. Um, it's, uh... It's not the fault of socialism, but that's almost another video. Uh, we've got Fox News now, of course, the propaganda arm of the war machine. Um, people on there saying, oh, Maduro might find that, and Maduro's the president of Venezuela, he might find that a uh, bullet in his head will be the way that he gets out of Venezuela. So... They're open and openly threatening to illegally invade a foreign country and kill the leader and replace him in a coup d'etat. On live television. For all the boomers to watch and cackle away at as they sit in their, in their furnished nice little camps and houses and winter retreats and live out their days stuffing their faces and wishing that they could get erections again. <sighs> what does this mean? Some might say, why oppose? Why oppose the Venezuelan invasion and coup done by the U.S.? Well, because I'm a non-interventionist. I don't believe that... Well, I don't believe in war. 
Full stop. To be honest, I don't believe in war. I don't think it's good, and I think I don't think it's inevitable. In a hum, like I don't think that countries and groups doing war against other groups like that is built into the human code. I really don't. I really don't think so. I mean, in some way, obviously, evolutionarily, conflict and survival and like tribalism is in, built in, but. It's nothing that we can't surpass as a, as a species and as a society. Um, and basically, I think that the situation we have right now where the U.S. is basically the world police uh, sucks. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually make the world any better of a place. It actually makes the world a far worse place because you have um, child sex trafficking rings and child slavery in Libya... Uh, that you didn't have before we toppled Gaddafi by shoving a bayonet up his ass. Okay. Um, and then Hillary Clinton says, oh, we came, he, we saw he died. Um, that's, that's the disgusting filth of people that are so honorably leading us into the fucking ground. Um, we've got ISIS. That was our fault. ISIS is our fault. But make no mistake about it. We went in. We are topple Saddam. Topple Osama. Power vacuum. New terrorist group. Why not? Why not? Democratically elected? Pfft, screw you. You want to privatize your oil. Pfft, 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 or nationalize your oil. Pfft, pfft, pfft. Dead. Leader of Iran? Dead. Replaced with the Shah? Sells, sells all that sweet Iranian oil to the U.S. If you don't, that's, what, that's what we mean when we say that the wars are about oil. We mean that whenever somebody tries to be like, oh, you know what, I think we're good. I'm not involved in the U.S. trade deal with the oil. I'm just going to keep it in my own country because we fucking need it. The U.S. goes, ah, yeah, well, you're not going to keep your head for very long. Sorry. And then we just shoot him because why? Well... The military are pawns of the leadership of the country because that's how a military works. Uh, you follow orders. Um, and the leadership are pawns of the corporations. Oh, that's how it works. Oil companies pay politicians and donate to their campaigns to get them elected because we live in a capitalist economy. Um in an in a ultra-capitalist, neoliberal political structure. So, you pay somebody enough money, they win. And then, oh, the person who gave me millions of dollars to get in this position of power over all these lowly peasants, I'll just order their children to be taken away and killed and shot and witness all their friends die in front of them and then send them back home with PTSD because... I want to serve the guy who write my who wrote my checks. Okay, so that's how it works. Okay, it's money and politics. That's the root of the issue. But but Venezuela. What about Venezuela? What about what about the 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 thesis of the video, if you if you will. Um. Well, Elliot Abrams is in charge of the diplomatic negotiations, I believe. He's in charge of something to do with Venezuela. And uh, who, who's that guy? Oh, yeah, right. That's the guy who uh, already led a bunch of fucking coups and near genocides in South and Central America in the past anyway. Oh, yeah, it's not really the best record. You got some, one of them, one of those, one of these disgusting pigs saying, oh, yeah, it's definitely about oil, because, you know, Venezuela's got the highest oil reserves, you know, they've got, they've got all the oil, so. Fuck it, bro, let's just go in and steal that shit, because oil does work. That's the U.S. So the U.S. empire doesn't even wear a mask, because you got this guy, um, I don't know what his name is, on live TV saying, oh, yeah, we're just going to shoot him in the head, you know, whatever. And you've got Trump literally tweeting... A coup by tweet of Maduro saying, hey, Juan Guaido is now the president. Who the fuck is Juan Guaido? Well, he's uh, basically the opposition in Venezuela's pick for president. Uh, and the opposition is a bunch of rich white people 
who are the minority in that country. It's a mestizo majority country, and what that means is they're uh, people who are half black, half uh, Hispanic native race, you know? So, what does that tell you? That tells you that Maduro is the more popular candidate. Maduro is the rightful president. He's the sitting president. He's there. Imagine, let's flip the script for a second, maybe get some of you more uh, sheepish-minded people on board with what I'm saying here. Um, since, you know, Republicans only care about anything once it's happened to them or someone close to them. Um... Because, you know, some people just have no fucking empathy, right? Yeah. Uh, well, what if Maduro tweeted or, you know, proclaimed on his with his fucking little like wannabe Stalin haircut and wannabe Stalin mustache said, uh, yeah, um, Donald Trump is not the president of the United States anymore. Uh Hillary Clinton is. <laughs> and then, you know, it would, or, fuck, oh, sorry. Or, you know, in the case of uh, another outcome, what if, hold on, what, <laughs> what if Maduro said the only way Trump will leave America is with a bullet in his skull? It'd be fucking top news, left and right. I'm not even kidding. Um, so, what's the what's the uh, message here? The message is, hands off Venezuela. The U.S. should not be doing coup by tweets or coup by anything against a democratically elected leader ever in any country. And let me be clear. Before you use Hitler as a comparison point to get me to be on board with your fucking psychopathic invasion strategy that you've got brewing in your head, you fucking disgusting neocons. Um, I am in favor of war only, only, when it's against a nation that is clearly committing a genocide. That's the only, the only, the only time that I'm pro-war ever. Is if the people we're invading are committing a genocide. And I'm going to add a whole nother layer to that. I'm not saying the U.S. should just go unilaterally and illegally fight them. I'm not saying that, even in the case of a genocide. I'm saying we should only take action as an international community. That's the way it should work. We are a nation amongst nations, not a nation above nations. Like the neocons think. What do I th what, do, what do I mean when I say neocon? I mean neoconservative. It's basically there's like a split in the conservative movement or ideology politically right now, where it's like you got the paleos and the neos. The paleos are like old, because you know paleo means old and neo means new. The paleo conservatives basically think that uh, war is bad because it wastes money. It's more of a libertarian ideology, really. Uh, and the neocons are on the total opposite side of that, and they're really more like corporatists, and they work closer with uh, neoliberals and fascistic proto-fascist types like Donald Trump or Hillary, Cl Hillary Clinton, you know, either one. I wonder why those were the two choices in 2016. Hmm. Maybe it's because the group of, you know, accessory people in, who, who would join the administration could have went either way with both of them. But anyway, uh, yeah. So the neocons think, oh, fuck yeah, Venezuelan oil, dude. I love that shit. Guzzle me down. Uh, but I think, as the whole entire left should think, and anyone who considers themselves a libertarian of any stripe should at least be hate to say the term woke on u.s foreign policy and u.s intervention and u.s empire and imperialism because that's what we live under that's literally what happens democratically elected leaders get toppled by us all the time based on this erroneous fucking 
vapid claim of, it's a humanitarian crisis. If you cared about people, you neocons, you neocons, if you cared about humanity and humans and humanitarian issues, then maybe we wouldn't have people drinking fucking sewer water in Flint, Michigan in our own country on our own soil that you seem to fucking care so desperately about with your fucking national sovereignty bullshit. You only care about our national sovereignty. Why the fuck else would you be threatening to invade a country? People don't understand. People don't understand that it's the biggest stick, the world power, gets passed around through history. And I mean, it was England before, and uh, the U.S., it really didn't take long for the U.S. to climb that ladder and grab the baton and be that. Some people still think, like, I heard Alex Jones on fucking Joe Rogan podcast talk about, like, it's always the, the British and the Germans fighting for power. Yeah, maybe, like, 400 years ago, dude. Like, I'll give you 300, but, like, not anymore. All the Germans care about now is exploiting Greece. Like, what, 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 what are you talking about? Um, but anyway, yeah, so basically I'm here to say hands off Venezuela. Uh, I don't support a coup. I don't support an invasion and I don't support intervention. And the reason, this is the other point that I forgot to mention thus far. The reason, excuse me, the reason why Maduro is not accepting foreign aid is because it's not aid. It's a Trojan horse tactic. They're sending weapons to the rebellion to fight him. They're arming the, the rebels. They're arming the opposition. Those white dudes, they're arming them. They're sending them weapons in the guise of aid. That's why Maduro denies the aid. And if you said, and also, here's the other factor. He doesn't deny aid when it's real. He's not denying all foreign aid. He's just denying the aid that isn't even aid. It's just guns. And you might say, oh, well, why did he deny it from England, too? Because England hates him, too. Of course England doesn't want Maduro in power in Venezuela. Of course they don't. They're the ones withholding his gold from him. These people, it's, it's, it's no sophistication of thought on anything at all. It's, it's, I cannot fucking believe that people actually sit there and listen to fucking Fox News and believe it. I can't believe that. I cannot believe that. How does your bullshit meter not just fire off when you hear somebody talk about, oh, maybe the only reason why, or the only way he'll leave Venezuela is with a bullet in his skull. It's like, yeah, haven't we fucking tried that before? Iraq ring a bell to you? Afghanistan ring a bell to you? Iran ring a bell to you? Huh? What are you talking about? What the fuck are we talking about? Why is the why is the Overton window so far to the right that this shit is acceptable now? Why is that? Why are there not mass protests in the streets against this shit? Why? Why do we condone this behavior? It's so frustrating. I can't stand it, dude. It's all right. Now, here's here's a final message for me, from me to you. All right, everybody watching this, everyone who might be watching this. I don't even know what the fuck I'm going to title this video. I could just say Venezuela rant because that's basically what it is. But um, we have to wake up again. We have to bring back and I'm not trying to be fucking trendy with being anti-war it's just a principled position i speak about this shit all the time and i have for years i've always been against war always we need to wake up again guys we need to realize that we cannot condone this behavior of our elected officials, and we need to fix our fucking whole political system, man. We really need to fix it. We need a political revolution. Uh, 
basically Bernie 2020, get the fuck money out of fucking politics, um, and no intervention, you know, even go Tulsi, Tulsi's my number two pick right now, Tulsi Gabbard is running for president with anti-war, non-interventionism as her key issue, so I mean, you if you fucking really, really, really are one of those leftists who's like, I don't like Bernie because he's straight and white and male. Then go for Tulsi because she's a fucking Hindu woman. And she's just as good, if not better, on the specific issue of foreign policy. So, yeah. You know what the funny thing about that is? She's a fucking veteran. She is a fucking veteran. I'll tell you this right now. I'm not against the troops. I'm against the wars and I'm against the slimy politician shit. I'm not against the fucking troops at all. You know why? Because they're basically Manchurian candidates. They, they don't know what they're doing. That's why they get them young. They're brainwashed. They're culturally brainwashed. And I mean, that sounds like a harsh term to use, but they gen what, my point is they genuinely think they're doing something good. That's, that's my point. The soldiers genuinely think that they're doing the right thing. They're not the problem. They're victims, just like us. In fact, they're worse victims. They're the key victims because they're being used like pawns by our fucking disgusting neocon ideologically possessed bullshit politicians who don't give a fuck about us and don't give a fuck about the people in Venezuela and sure as fuck don't give a fuck about any of the people in the Middle East at all. So, uh, in fact, I'm sure they'd rather see that entire section of the world besides maybe Saudi Arabia and fucking Israel wiped into the sea honestly that'd be to them that'd be great but um what i'm saying here is we need to hold our elected officials accountable we need to stand up and say wait a second what 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 are we doing why have we come to this point why why are we trying to depose maduro because you go to any regular voter and i guarantee you they don't give a fuck about fucking maduro unless they're stupid fucking Fox News Luddite, but I mean, people in this country are suffering, dude. Not, it's, it's, why do we have, why do we feel the need as a governmental body to expropriate our problems to other places? Like, oh, humanitarian crisis! Ah! It's like, no, the real humanitarian crisis is that. We've got fucking student loan debt up the wazoo. You got young people working like slaves to pay off their debt, okay? You got fucking people who go bankrupt over medical payments that they can't make, all right? It's... <sighs> the richest among us feel the need to bribe their way, their children's way into college. Why would that need even be felt? Especially, like, you know what I'm saying? Why? Basically, uh, this, this whole entire fucking country's got its value system completely backwards, dude. I'm not kidding. It's, it's like, I just, sometimes I feel like I'm the only one who sees it the way that I see it. Because, like, majority of what you see, and it's been this way my entire life, and I kind of understand that now, is propaganda. Just like the fucking Fox News thing that I saw today that really made me mad, that gave me the idea to make this video. Because, like, dude, it's 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 so ridiculous how they think that they can just walk in and take what they want like that. It's, it's... Some would say on a grand human species scale that it's just inevitable that that will happen, but... I would say to them that even by their own logic, it would also be inevitable that the empires will crumble. So, if we don't fucking shape up, shape up or shut up, basically, because it's all going down if we don't. So, uh, yeah. That was my Venezuela message. I hope it, I hope it got through to you. Basically, my point is, uh, there is no good reason why we would want to fucking execute a foreign leader. There is no good reason right now, because 
it's just not there. So Maduro's not committing a genocide. Maduro's not, you know, Maduro is not Hitler. Remember that. And, uh, yeah, my point is, if I have to say it again, no coup. Can't do coups. Can't do invasions, dude. You can't. It's illegal. It's wrong. And it kind of makes no fucking sense unless you buy into the ideology of the status quo. So, have fun being a uh, fascist fucking... Trump, Trumple youth, all you fucking morons who debate with me on Facebook, and uh, I will see you next time. Sayonara.